Hello everyone and welcome to our October of 2020 PC build guide starring this $900 AMD build. So keep it in mind that pricing is fluctuating quite a bit because we are in a global pandemic currently. So your mileage may vary on the pricing you can get this system for. Parts right now are fluctuating between $850 to $900 and I was able to secure it for that price range within the last week. So that being said, if you're a beginner to PC building and you need some assistance or you just like watching PC builds, I've got you covered. So let's break down this build step by step and do an entire walkthrough. So let's jump into it. So let's start with our parts in this build, starting with our CPU, which is the Ryzen 5 3600X six core 12 thread processor that includes a Wraith Spire cooler. So you don't have to dish out extra cash for a water cooler or an external box cooler. You already got a cooler included in the box. Now, moving on to our motherboard, we are using a Gigabyte B450 Aurorus M, which is a micro ATX board followed by our memory, which is a kit of 16 gigabytes of Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro RAM running at 3,600 megahertz. Now, when it comes to our storage, we are rocking an M.2 Western Digital 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And for our graphics, we're gonna be looking at an Asus Dual Mini 1660 Super. Our power supply is a Corsair CV550 watt and our case, which is the Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L. So we didn't really go heavy RGB with this build. We did throw a little bit of splash of color in it, but for the most part, it is a pretty minimalistic build. Now, talking about the actual guide, first thing I always like to have is a clear clutter-free workspace, followed by a trusty screwdriver. Now, you can also have a magnetic bowl or a kitchen bowl that I just use to put away like the screws from the build. And for the most part, that's pretty much it. You don't really have to overcomplicate this step. Anything to help you get organized when putting away screws or accessories. Now, first thing we're gonna do is grab our case and check it out, see what we're working with and see what the layout consists of. Starting with removing our thumb screws, which are located usually on the back and on the front glass of the case, whether it's tempered glass or it's just an actual metal panel that you're gonna be using. So we're gonna remove these and then check out the cable layout associated with the case. Keep in mind, some cases do have tempered glass front panels, which is literally glass. So you wanna be careful with that. You don't wanna drop that or put that anywhere where it can get hurt or like explode. And if it's your first time building with a specific case, it's always a good idea to glance over the documentation to make sure you're not missing any special features. And oftentimes cases will include little baggies that have accessories like cable ties and actual screws. So it's always a good time to check this out. This specific case has a back metal panel, a front plastic panel, and then it's got these magnetic dust covers on the top and on the front, including the bottom two for your power supply intake fan. Now that you've actually cracked open your case, taking a look at what's actually going on in there, you're gonna find some cables. So you may have some external fans and you're also gonna have your front IO cables, which these guys are really important. First thing you'll see is your USB 3 cable, USB 2.0 sometimes, HD audio, and these cables are different and have different keys, so you don't have to worry about plugging them into the wrong plug. You'll also find these front I.O. panel cables, which are often the most daunting and scary cables you'll come across when building a PC. But for now, we can set them aside and we will deal with them later. Now that we've ID'd everything, we can actually get into the good stuff and unbox those parts and put this case to the side. So. I always like to start with our motherboard box and make sure that all the accessories are there, there's nothing broken and everything's looking pretty stock from the factory. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and open your box and reveal your motherboard. Now the motherboard is usually sitting inside of an anti-static bag. I also like to place the motherboard on top of the box once it's removed. This is going to be a pretty static free workspace and a nice place that you're just not gonna have clutter everywhere when you're working on your motherboard. Once you've got your motherboard sitting on top of the box, the first thing I personally like to do is install an NVMe SSD if you have one, which just screws in right here. Oftentimes, some motherboards like this one include an NVMe shield, which can be removed by just unscrewing the mounting screw. Then you can go ahead and lift up the shield and slide it out of its slot and you're good to go. Sometimes your drive will be a bit shorter, which is why your motherboard will include a little standoff for installation that you can place in and mount the SSD to it. Now, once you've screwed in your standoff, you can go ahead and install your NVMe SSD. I like to position it at a 30 degree angle and just push it in. We can then push it down, reinstall the shield by sliding it in and tighten the screw. 
Next thing we can take a look at is your CPU cooler. In my case, I will be using the stock Ryzen Wraith air cooler, which isn't necessarily the best cooler, but it does offer adequate cooling while being essentially free as it's included in the box. Also keep in mind, this cooler comes with pre-installed thermal paste on the bottom of the heat sink, so you won't need to worry about thermal paste application and just make sure you don't touch the thermal compound or end up placing it down on a table. So moving on to CPU insulation, we will first be removing these two brackets that can often be found on AM4 motherboards, like this one from Gigabyte. We won't be needing these for the stock cooler's insulation, so I will be just unscrewing the Phillips screws and removing both of these brackets. I will be leaving the back plate on this motherboard, which is going to become loose after we remove these screws. Also keep in mind, with everything you do remove, you wanna place it back in your motherboard box, making sure that you're not gonna lose any brackets or any screws that you might need later. We are now moving on to one of the more tedious parts of your PC building experience, which is installing your CPU. So the first thing we wanna do is remove the processor from its clamshell packaging and try to keep your fingers off the back pins. You definitely don't wanna bend any of these. These types of CPUs are PGA, or pin grade array CPUs, which basically just means that on the back of the processor, you will find these little delicate pins that you wanna be careful around. The CPU needs to be gently placed in correct orientation and aligned with all the little holes within the motherboard socket. In order to make sure you are lined up perfectly, look for this little gold triangle on the corner of the CPU and find the matching triangle on the socket itself. The triangle on the socket itself is a little bit harder to find because it's etched in the plastic, but it is located diagonally from the socket retention arm, which is this little metal rod here. Raise this arm by pulling it out and up and make sure the triangle corners are lined up and gently place the CPU into the socket without applying any force. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's seated properly and press down that retention rod to secure the CPU. And guess what guys, you install the CPU. So this one is done. Next, we're going to install our cooler, which we're going to install to the four mounting points we located earlier. Now this cooler happens to be reversible, so you can install it in this orientation or in this one. However, you do wanna be aware of where the four pin CPU plug is going. You want this to go into the CPU fan header, which happens to be located here on this particular motherboard. Remember, once you choose your correct orientation for the CPU cooler on your motherboard, when you tighten it down, it's going to basically compress the thermal compound and spread it over your CPU. So you wanna get it right the first time and not have to reinstall it again. However, if you do end up doing it backwards, it's not the end of the world. Once you've sat it down, make sure all the threads are lined up with the cooler's spring-loaded screws. Turn the first screw in until you feel the screw grab the back of the threading on the back plate and then move on to the opposite corner and do the same. And continually swap around opposite corners and make sure you're tightening evenly. You do wanna make sure you've got even pressure on the insulation for the heatsink. You don't want too much pressure on one side of the CPU than the other. Just make sure all the screws are tightened evenly and that's pretty much it for your CPU cooler. Once you've finished installing your CPU heatsink, we can install our memory, which is pretty straightforward. So first thing you're gonna notice is find where your memory slots are located. And then our actual memory sticks will have a notch that's been cut out, which will be located slightly lower on the stick itself. And it's to make sure you can't install it the wrong way. So we have our four memory slots on this board and two sticks of memory. So we wanna make sure that the memory is running in dual channel mode. You can find all these details on how your motherboard handles memory in the motherboard's manual itself, but this installation is normally the way to go if you've got two sticks. We want to install our sticks in every other slot, with the first stick going in the slot furthest away from the CPU. Once you've located the slots on your motherboard, go ahead and pop the catches on either side, line up the memory, and apply pressure on both sides until you hear the click and notice the tabs pop back into their original position. This process is pretty straightforward. Just make sure you have everything lined up right and everything should pop into place. So now that we've got our CPU cooler, CPU, memory, NVMe drive all installed, we can set the motherboard aside and work back with our case. We're now ready to install our IO shield, which installs right here in the back of the case and looks like this. So IO shields essentially protect the inputs and outputs on the back of the motherboard. And the orientation is pretty easy to find. Just line it up with the back of the motherboard and usually the audio ports are at the bottom. So some newer motherboards do have IO shields that just come pre-installed and you won't even really have to worry about this. But in our case, we do have to install our IO shield into our case. 
All you have to do is line it up with a cutout in the back of the case and snap it into place with some firm pressure. You may need to play with it a bit to get a nice seal. It's a bit of a pain sometimes, but you'll eventually snap it in. And now that you've got your motherboard ready, along with your installed IO shield, we can go ahead and get ready to install the motherboard into the case. By the way, if you are still stuck on installing an IO shield, just have patience. There's little teeth that will align, give it some firm pressure and it should just snap in. But moving on to actually installing the motherboard in our case, we can get to that now. So taking a peek into the case, we're gonna find some standoffs. Some cases have standoffs in mini ATX or micro ATX configurations or both. If you don't know which threads to use, just lay the motherboard down in the case and your cutouts should align. Make sure to angle the motherboard so you're lining up the rear IO to slot into the IO panel in the back of the case. Now in our case, pun intended, we are gonna be using a micro ATX configuration. So I will be adding some standoffs that are included in my accessory kit that came with the parts. If you don't necessarily have extra standoffs, just make sure to install as many as you can, making sure that you're using the cross tightening method and that your motherboard is secured to your case. So once you've finished tightening all your screws and you've got your motherboard seated in, we can now plug in any fans that your case may have or that you may be adding. I'm looking for the closest fan header on this exhaust fan that came pre-installed and you can go ahead and plug it in to this four pin header here. These headers are usually labeled such as system fan and you can use three pin or four pin plugs on these headers. So once you're done plugging in any external fans, we can now plug in our front panel IO, which is one of the least enjoyable parts of building a PC and more daunting, but it's pretty simple. So let's jump into it. First, we can route this bundle of cables through the back of the case and have them come out through the bottom where we can install them and plug them into the headers. The more straightforward connectors are actually labeled like USB 3 and HD audio plugs. And the headers are also usually labeled and have a certain pin configuration where you can just line it up and plug it in. Our USB 3 goes into the USB 3.0 header and our HD audio goes into the audio header. This also happens to be similar with these guys. Here you'll find your reset switch, HDD LED, power switch, power LED positive, and power LED negative pin. So most modern motherboards usually have a pin diagram on the board itself or within the manual. Some even have an organizer plug where you can just pop all the pins into the plug and then plug the plug in, which is really simple. But if you need to manually install the pins, we can just do it this way too. Our pin diagram shows us where each negative and positive pin needs to go. So on the top left-hand corner, you'll find the power LED positive pin needs to be connected. Then next to that, you'll connect the power LED negative pin. The same goes with the connection for the HDD LED, which has a negative and positive end. Just align the pins, match them, and you'll be good to go. But just to make sure you've got it down packed, let's do them one at a time. Starting with our power LED positive, which goes right here, power LED negative, power switch, which goes next to them, HDD LED, which goes underneath our power LED positive and negative pins, and finally our reset switch, which goes right next to that one. After we have our front IO installed, just making sure you've got your HD audio plug, your USB 3.0 connector, and your front panel IO pins. Once we're all done with that, we can go ahead and move on to our power supply. So power supplies sometimes come in two configurations, a fully modular, a semi-modular, or just a non-modular, which basically just means our fully modular power supplies essentially don't have a bundle of cables that comes out of the rear, and you'll only need to plug in the cables you need, which means things are a bit cleaner. But if you are using a non-modular power supply, you can just tuck away all the extra power cables you won't be using. So when it comes to wiring up your motherboard, you're only gonna be needing two power cables. The power cables you're gonna need are the standard 24 pin power cable for the motherboard and the eight pin CPU power connector. For installing the power supply, all you have to do is slide it in with the fan facing down. The case usually does have a fan intake filter for the power supply at the bottom that helps prevent dust buildup. We can then secure the power supply to the case with the four screws on the back and they are usually included with your power supply or your case. The first power cable we can install is our 24 pin, which will just route through here, run it up and out and plug it in, making sure to keep the cable install as neat and clean as possible. And same goes for our CPU power connector in the top right corner, which by the way, this connector is eight pins and either a solid brick of eight or can be split into two four pins. 
route it the same way and plug it in at the top. Our final cable is our PCIe Express power cable, which is going to be used to power our graphics card. So a pretty important cable, but before we install that power cable, we need to install our graphics card, which will be installed into the top PCIe slot. First, pop the tab on the slot, and then we can start with removing some of the mounting brackets on the back of the case. So some cases have screws that you'll remove in order to pop off these brackets, or you'll have something similar to this, where you essentially just pull them off. The graphics card we will be using is a two slot card, so we will be removing two brackets. Now, after you've cleared the brackets, you're ready to plug in your GPU, which we have right here. I like to go in at a bit of an angle when aligning the GPU with the bracket slots and slot it in easily into the connector, allowing the tab to pop back into its original locked position. From there, we can go ahead and tighten down the mounting screws on the back of the case, lifting the card up a bit so the screw holes align and tighten everything down. Once you've tightened down your graphics card, you can go ahead and plug in your PCIe power cable and you are basically done with your system. Now, keep everything open before we plug in our power cable. So just in case we need to troubleshoot anything, everything's open and accessible. So if you've gotten this far, you're doing great. Go ahead and plug in your power supply cord, flip the switch and do the honors. And look at that, it appears to be working. So this power on can lead to instant satisfaction or the beginning of troubleshooting. Whether you've got a fan without power or some misplaced front IO connectors, just double check everything in case you're having any issues. Before I do any cable managing, I like to make sure, first of all, the system is booted up, working with a monitor, and then I'll put all the panels back on, manage everything with you know your cable ties, keeping everything organized, cleaned, just so that the system is polished. Installing the back panel and front panel are as easy as sliding it into place and tightening down the screws. And once you've got your monitor plugged in and you're at your BIOS screen, you are good to go and ready to game. So this is the first PC build guide I've ever done. So if you guys have any suggestions, any criticism, comments, anything, I'm definitely down to hear it down in the comments below. Drop a like if you liked the video or if you wanna see more of these types of build, if you wanna see theme build, if you wanna make this a series, let me know guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out guys.